Hello everyone. This is the continuation of lecture 27 of Math 22. In the first part of the lecture, we tackled the Arcan formula and parametrization using Arcan. For this part, we consider curvature of space curves. It is well known in differential geometry that a space curve is uniquely characterized by two geometric properties, the bending and the twisting of the curve. The amount of bending of a curve is called curvature, while the amount of twisting is called torsion. For this lecture, we will be interested only in the curvature of space curves. To begin, let us consider the following illustration. Suppose we have two circles of different radii. Which circle do you think is more bent. To help you answer the question, let us take an arc on each of the circles with the same length. Okay, so you see here the arc on the smaller circle, which is of the same size as the arc on this larger circle. Which arc is more bent? Right, the arc on the smaller circle is more bent than the arc on the larger circle. To justify that conclusion, we can compare how the tangent vectors to this arc move from one point to another. This is the tangent vector to this arc at the initial point of the arc, and this is the tangent vector to the arc at its terminal point. On the other hand, this is the tangent vector to this arc at the initial point of the arc, and this is the tangent vector at the terminal point. We can see here that the tangent vector to the arc on the smaller circle changes its direction faster than that of the tangent vector to the larger circle. That justifies our conclusion earlier. So we can generalize that conclusion and we can say that the smaller circle is more bent than the larger circle. Moreover, with our justification, we can say that the curvature is actually determined by the rate at which the unit tangent vector changes its direction. Hence, we can now define mathematically the curvature function. Formally, we define the curvature of a smooth space curve to be the norm of the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to the arc length parameter s. We denote the curvature function by the letter kappa. Observe that in this definition, we are required to provide an arc length parametrization of the curve in order to get the derivative of the unit tangent with respect to the arc length parameter s. Let us illustrate this using a particular example. For our first example, we would like to show that the line or any line in space has zero curvature. We provide an arc length parametrization for a line. Let x not y not z not be a point on the line. We use a direction vector v with components a, b, c with norm equal to 1 so that r of s with components x0 plus a s, y0 plus b s, z0 plus c s is arc length parametrized. From the previous lecture, the unit tangent vector is exactly r prime of s. Taking the derivative of every component of R, R prime of S is now the constant vector function A, B, C. Hence, if we now take the derivative of T with respect to the arc length parameter S, that is simply T prime of S, it will now be of components equal to zero. And therefore, the curvature which is defined to be the norm of the derivative of t with respect to s is equal to zero. 
That means the line has zero curvature at every point on it. This result also tells us that the curvature measures the extent to which a curve fails to be straight. That means if the value of the curvature is very close to zero, then the curve is very close to being a straight line. If the curvature is very large, that means the curve is overly bent. Now let us obtain an alternative formula that will not require us to provide an arc length parametrization. We can do this by applying a chain rule of differentiation. Recall that in the previous lecture, we are able to relate the arc length parameter s with an arbitrary parameter t. And with that relation, the derivative of the unit tangent vector t with respect to t will now be equal to the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to the arc length parameter s multiplied by ds dt. Since the curve is assumed to be smooth, that means the vector function r prime is never zero, and hence its norm will always be positive. Note that the norm of r prime of t from the previous lecture is equal to ds dt. Now, because ds dt is never zero, I can divide both sides of this equation by ds dt and obtain the following equation. Hence, using the definition of the curvature as the norm of the derivative of t with respect to s, replacing this by this expression here, we get the following. Now, ds dt is a scalar quantity that is always greater than zero, so we can place it outside the norm and write it this way. Furthermore, I can now replace the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to t by the notation capital T prime of t and replace ds dt by the norm of r prime of t. And so we have the following expression. An alternative formula would be kappa of t equal to the norm of t prime over the norm of r prime, regardless of the interpretation of the parameter. Let us use this alternative formula to answer the next example. Let us prove that the curvature of a circle is constant. That means the amount of bending at every point on the circle does not change. So without loss of generality, let us consider a circle that is centered at the origin of radius equal to some positive constant a. That will be parameterized by the vector function r of t equal to a cosine t, a sine t. Differentiating r, we get r prime of t with the following components. And when we solve for the norm of r prime of t, we get the constant a. From this, we can solve for the unit tangent vector t. By definition, it is the normalized form of r prime of t. Dividing each component here by a, the unit tangent vector is now the vector negative sine t cosine of t zero. Differentiating further this unit tangent vector, we get t prime of t with components negative cosine of t, negative sine t zero. Solving for the norm, of this t prime of t, we get 1. Hence, by the alternative formula, the curvature at any value of the parameter t is equal to the norm of t prime of t over the norm of r prime of t, which now gives us 1 over a. Hence, a circle has constant curvature. And at any point on the circle, we can see that the curvature is equal to the reciprocal of the radius. This means that smaller circles have larger curvature.
there is another alternative formula for the curvature that uses only the first and the second derivatives of the vector function r. Kappa of t is equal to the norm of r prime of t cross r double prime of t divided by the cube of the norm of r prime of t. This is stated as theorem 7.5.4 in the module of Mathematics 22. If you want to see the proof, you may refer to that theorem. Let us use this alternative formula to answer the following problem. Determine the curvature of the twisted cubic represented by r of t with components t, t squared over 2, and t cubed over 3, particularly at t equal to 1. So by the alternative formula, I am looking for kappa of 1, so I just have to solve for r prime of 1 and r double prime of 1. Differentiating each component of the given vector function, we get r prime of t equal to 1, 2t over 2, that simplifies to t, 3t squared over 3, that simplifies to t squared. Evaluating this at 1, we get r prime 1 with components 1, 1, 1. Differentiating this further, the second derivative of r will have components 0, 1, 2t. Evaluating at 1, r double prime is the vector 0, 1, 2. Hence, the curvature at t equal to 1 is equal to this according to the alternative formula. So you just plug in these obtained vectors here. I want you to verify that the cross product of r prime 1 and r double prime 1 is the vector 1, negative 2, 1. Solving for these norms here, this is equal to the square root of 6 over the cube of the square root of 3, which simplifies to the square root of 2 over 3. That concludes the lecture for curvature of space squares. Here are some exercises for the entire lecture 27, which covers arc length formula, parametrization using arc length, and curvature of space curves. I suggest you try to answer them on your own. And if you want to check your work, you may watch the discussion video for lecture 27. Thank you for listening.